My next guest is an actor and a screenwriter with many TV and film credits to his name, including two indie horror flicks, which he also co-wrote with Jim Mickle, 2006's Mulberry Street and 2010's Stakeland. He and Jim collaborated once again on another horror film, We Are What We Are, which screened at Sundance and Cannes and is now playing at the Landmark Sunshine Cinema on Houston Street. I saw it. It creeped me the hell out. Please welcome Mr. Nick DiMici. Oh, this way. <laughs> Welcome, Nick. Good to be here. Good to be here. Do you have any idea where you are or what this is? I have no idea, no clue. I love it. I love it. But you grew up in New York City, not too far from uh, Hell's uh, Kitchen area? Yeah, 44th Street, 10th Avenue. Wow. Avenue. Native, Native New Yorker. Yeah. How much better slash worse was it back then? I liked it. <laughs> you liked it. All right, he liked it. <laughs> Because I always hear, you know, people say, oh, Times Square, you know, he missed the old Times Square, the old Midtown, you know, the hookers and the, the, the peep, uh, peep shows. And my dad was a bartender on 44th Street and 11th Avenue. And when I was a kid in the summer, he'd take me and my brother in, and we ran the kitchen. Working man's bars, no women in there, you know, so like old school. Yeah. You know, I was like 10, 12 years old, whatever. And our entertainment, me and my brother, was like, you know, when we had a break, we'd go to the window and watch the hookers on 11th Avenue. Wow, look at this shit. Nowadays, they call that child abuse, but... Yeah. Nowadays, it's just uh, tourists walking by. Not, not, not enough fun. Yeah, yeah, they got rid of the hookers. Yeah. Damn. We need some, like, tourists turning to prostitution. That's what we need. That's what we need. Yeah. Repopulate the area. <laughs> well, Nick, uh, I'm glad you make... You know, Julia Garner and Bill Sage, two of the leads from the movie, uh, sadly could not schedule... Uh, could not be here. They're scheduled to join you here, but... Uh, they're not feeling well. Is it a flare-up of Kuru disease, maybe? This is a reference to the so. film that nobody <laughs> will get. This, tell me about this movie. Tell me about this movie. I saw it. I loved it. Um, I don't watch uh, a lot of horror movies, Nick. I don't. You know, I, but what I, what I really liked about this one was, you know, it doesn't go over the top with the gore and the shock and all that. It, it, it's, a, it's a more of a mystery. I really love the mystery element, the, the, the detective story with the, the Michael Parks character. I mean, Mm -hmm. Tell me what makes it's this the, different uh, from most of the other horror movies that you've done in the past. Well, first off, I don't know if anybody's seen the original, which is We All We All, but it's a Mexican version, which has come out a few years ago, which was really good. Right. And we got hired, Jim Mickle and I, to make the uh, remake, the American version. You know, and Jim came to my kitchen with it, you know, and he brought it to him, and he came down, and we watched it. You know, I was like, no fucking way. What the fuck are we going to do? You know, it's like, yeah. it's perfect the way it is. What, are you going to make this movie again? And he said, no, no, they want an American version, and they give us a lot of freedom. We can do what we want. And they had money to green light it. So I was like, all right, I'll think about it. You know, and we thought about it, and then finally I said, okay, as long as we can have our freedom to do it. So uh, where their version didn't delve into why these people eat people, um, there's no, this is no so, spoiler. Is this a, I couldn't tell what I want to talk no about. Spoiler. No spoiler. So we could talk about no, there, There's cannibalism no. in the movie. We made that choice, you know. <laughs> Anybody who's seen the original is going to go in knowing this right, is a cannibal right. movie, so we said, ah, we don't have to hide it. That's it. Mom will never go see this movie. Yeah. Uh, cannibalism, she's not into that. Oh, but it's really good cannibalism. <laughs> Major turnoff for my mom, apparently. <laughs> They've tried it. And then. <laughs> and their, their version was like inner city, inner Mexico City, really urban, gritty. You know, they're eating hookers and just really weird. A lot of hooker talk in this show. Yeah. <laughs> just starting to pick up on that, yeah. So we said, let's flip that. And we did it upstate New York, you know, and then we brought in, because we wanted that answer, why do they do it? Right. And, you know, and they brought it in the first one, it was some kind of ritual, but they never explained it. So we made it this religious thing, like people were stranded in the 1600s in the winter and they had to eat each other, you know, in the, on Just, this land. And this family survived, the kids survived. Yeah. And they were a religious, you know, group of people traveling. And that got twisted somehow when the kids, you know, had to watch daddy feed them mommy. He right. explained it, you know, it's okay. God said it's okay. You can eat mommy. Right. But the kids survive and take that on. And, you know, generations later, the family is still, They're still you know, even every, though, lamb, every lamb's day, daddy got to go out and find somebody to be the turkey. Right. You right. know, and bang. So it, be, it was kind of fun to just 
play with religion that way. Even though there's a Papa John's and Socrates, you know. Yeah, but they, they ain't serving mommy. <laughs> yeah.